Good morning. This service is coming to you from the First United Methodist Church of Greenfield, Mass, and we definitely welcome you to share in this worship. This is the second Sunday of Easter. It's easy to forget our reason for being here. Let's take time to put aside our fears, our social iso isolation, and an inability to gather at church, or our inability to simply share personal time with family and friends. All these changes make it easy for us to have doubt. Our faith can be called into question. It's important to remember the ultimate sacrifice of Jesus, his life, his death, and his resurrection. Let us pray. Lord, we come today seeking peace and release from our fears and our darkness. We know that you are here with us, guiding, healing, and loving us. Help us to reach out to others with the same love you give to us. Make us people who bring words of compassion and hope and actions of help and loving kindness to all we meet. Place our feet on the pathway of life, offering ourselves and our gifts for your holy realm. Encourage us to grow and learn about ministries of reconciliation and compassion. When we falter, pick us up. When we fail, remind us that you believe in us. When we turn and run because of our fear, bring us home again. These things we ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. I'd like to do a reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 5 that are appropriate for today. Praise be to God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth in, into living hope. Through resurrection, Jesus Christ was raised from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance we receive is kept in heaven for us, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. I'd like to do a prayer of confession. Must we see in order to believe in you, Lord? Is seeing truly believing? Are we prisoners of our senses, distrusting and rejecting whatever we cannot see or touch or hear? Yet you are faithful. You give sight to the blind. You carry us when we are weary. You call us to your side. The locked room of our hearts opens at the turn of your key. Speak your words of life to us again. Do not doubt, only believe. Speak your words of life that we might live. Amen. You know, Christ is, comes into every shadow corner of our lives with the light of Easter. Christ comes into the locked rooms of our faults and gives us with grace and hope. Christ comes to fill us with peace that we may proclaim the good news of mercy and forgiveness. Thanks be to God, Christ has come to us. Today for our gospel reading, I'd like to read from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening, on the day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I so send you. When he said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. 
But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nail in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but, be but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Jesus said to them, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But they are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. Today's sermon it will focus on the gospel I just read from John. The sermon is titled, Have No Doubt. My Bible breaks the readings into three sections. The first section is titled, Jesus Appears to the Disciples. The second, Jesus and Thomas. And the third, the purpose of this book or scroll. Let's start with Jesus appears to the disciples. Today's reading begins on Easter evening, the same day that the disciples saw the empty tomb. And Mary saw Jesus. The disciples met in a room in Jerusalem, behind locked doors. They were afraid. They were afraid of the Jewish authorities, the same authorities who had manipulated the Romans to crucify our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is how the gospel from 19, verse 19b in today's gospel reads from four different versions of the Bible. Listen to the similarities because they're important when I go to make my point. From the common English Bible, the disciples were behind closed doors. Because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. From the King, of the, from the King James Version, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. The New International Version reads, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them. And finally, the New Revised Version, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them. Now I'd like to pose a couple of questions that I believe are food for thought. If the doors were locked, how is it that Jesus came and stood among them? None of the versions say he knocked on the door and then the disciples let him in. There's no mention of Jesus in a loud voice declaring his presence to the disciples and they respond faithfully by letting him in. Does this demonstrate the power of our risen Savior does this demonstrate not only could the tombs be sealed by a large stone and not able to contain him, is it now that this door, this locked door, couldn't contain him either? I happen to believe it does. It's certainly something to think about. Moving on to what happens next, he said to them, peace be with you. Jesus is frightened of the disciples. His peace, remember, the Jewish authorities and the Romans had just crucified Christ. The fo his followers, they were his disciples. They had cause to be afraid. Verse 20 reads, after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Remember the questions I posed earlier. Jesus entered the room through a locked door, suggesting that his body assumed in a different form. And now his wounds confirm his human body's resurrection. The disciples recognized him and were filled with joy. 
Jesus had already smoked, spoken to them prior to the resurrection about his coming back. Early in the Gospel of John, in chapter 16, verses 20 through 22, Jesus said to the disciples, Very truly I tell you, you will meet, weep and mourn, but the world will rejoice. You will have pain, but your pain will turn into joy. When a woman is in labor, she has pain because her hour has come. When her child is born, she no longer remembers the anguish because of the joy of having brought a human being into the world. So you have pain now, but I will see you again, and your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. This visit by Jesus to the disciples was the fulfillment of the promise he had just made. The disciples did weep. They did mourn. They did experience pain when Jesus was arrested, tried, and crucified. But now their pain has turned to joy at seeing Jesus alive again. This was a turning point for the disciples. Never again did they need to be fearful as followers of Christ. Then Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. I forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Jesus doesn't send his disciples into the world alone. He prepares them by breathing on them, just as God breathed the breath of life into man in Ezekiel. God's breath gave new life to the bones of the dead in the valley of the dried bones. But now also, Jesus breathes into the disciples the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of life, and he fills them. You know, prior to Christ filling his promise to them, the disciples were afraid and confused, so they remained hidden behind closed doors, out of sight. And we now know that a lot of them had reason to be fearful. A lot of them were executed for following Christ. Now the disciples found the strength to stand up, unlock the door, go outside into the world, and proclaim Christ, to teach the fulfillment of God's promise through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The fulfillment of God's promise to us, the forgiveness of sin, a life everlasting with him, through the sacrifice and resurrection of his only begotten son, Jesus. Ah, but this is just the beginning of today's gospel. Let's move to Jesus and Thomas. Before moving, before moving back to the gospel, I'd like to read a brief narrative from the Encyclopedia Britannia. Britannica that describes Thomas. The Apostle Thomas was also known as Didymus, the twin. As to who his twin was, it's not known. He was a fisherman and a native of Galilee in Israel. After the resurrection of the Lord Christ Jesus, Thomas went to Babylon. It's believed that he established the first Christian church there. Thomas is also known to have gone to Persia, and from there he went to India to preach the gospel and making many converts. It is believed that Thomas arrived in India no later than 49 AD. It is also believed that the apostle Thomas evangelized as far as China. And while in India, he suffered martyrdom. He was killed with a lance and buried in Mylapore, India which is now a suburb of Madras. It is believed he died on the 21st of December. The Apostle Thomas is said to have been a fearless evangelist and the great builder of churches. With this description, let's move on to the next part of our gospel titled, Jesus and Thomas. Thomas was one of 12. He wasn't with the disciples when Jesus originally came to them. The other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. Remember what Thomas replied, unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my fingers in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hands in his side, I won't believe. After a week, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them this time. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among him. 
He said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, look at my hands, put your hand into my side, no more disbelief, believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord, my God. Jesus replied, do not, be, do not believe because you see me. Happy are those who don't, don't see and yet they believe. The first person that the disciples witnessed to was their own Thomas, who was not present when Jesus first appeared to them. When the disciples told Thomas what they had seen, he did not believe them. The disciples didn't believe Mary when he, they saw Jesus. They were distant and despondent until they saw Jesus with their own eyes. And so it is with us sometimes. So let's look at Thomas and the disciples and even us today. Unless I see the nail marks in my hands, put my fingers in the wound left by the nails and put my hands into his side, I won't believe. After a week, the disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Here it comes. Remember my food for, for thought from earlier. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them and he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your fingers here, look at my hands, put your hand in my side, no more disbelief. Wow, Jesus enters into, a lock, enters into the room through a locked door. He already knew his Lord and Savior, Thomas's disbelief. He offered for Thomas to do what he had told the disciples he needed to, they needed to do and he needed to do. Put your finger here, look at my hands, put your hand in my side. Then he calls out to Thomas and admonishes him by saying, no more disbelief. And Thomas responded, my Lord, my God, Obviously, Thomas overcame his disbelief. How could he not? Now comes Jesus Christ's message to Thomas and to us. Jesus replied, Do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. It's all about faith in the things we cannot see. It's like with the air we breathe that allows us to exist. We know down in our very bones that the air exists. Christ can exist and doesn't exist in us, does exist in us for today. Nowhere in scripture is Thomas called the Doubting Thomas. This is a secular name that was given to him. He knew, as you and I know, that God is real, Christ is real, the Holy Spirit is real. Having faith will leave you with no doubts. And all God's people said, Amen. Let us pray. Must we see you in order to believe you, Lord? Is truly seeing believing? Are we to be prisoners of our senses, distrusting and rejecting whatever we cannot see, touch, or hear? Yet you are faithful. You give sight to the blind. You carry us when we are weary. You call us to your side. May the locked room of our hearts open at the turn of your key. Speak your words of life again. Do not doubt, only believe. Speak your words of life that we may live. Amen. You know, it's now time to go from this place. The Lord makes us a blessing to all with whom we meet, that we meet. Give us courage, love, and hope. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you'll join us next week. And I hope that this virus will end soon so that we can all gather as the family of God. Blessings to you.